Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's another time to chat with my friend Lincoln Bryden. Um, we recently had a webcast and discussed a whole lot of things to support you. And I definitely know that what we've got on topic today is things that's going to help the Group X instructor, also the PT instructor. It's going to be looking at some tactics, certainly that's going to help you with perhaps your income, but it's certainly going to give you a whole load of ideas. And um, that's what I brought him on to get him to share his experience and his wisdom. So Lincoln, thanks for joining us. Please, can you obviously introduce yourself and say why you're here? Hi. Well, firstly, thanks for inviting me on. It's a great opportunity, as always, to speak to you, Teresa. Uh, my name's Lincoln. I am lucky enough to have been in the fitness industry for about 32, 33 years now. Um, hence why I keep my hair short to hide the grey hairs. Um, I presented for FitPro way back when. Uh, in the group exercise uh, convention days around about 1999, believe it or not, I toured with them in terms of the choreography club. And now I've been a lecturer for about 15, 20 years. I have my own training company, training people to become personal trainers. And I now coach group exercise instructors and fitness professionals in general, just to help them to streamline their businesses and help them to maximize the earnings from the skills that they've learned. So that's about me, really. Love that. In a nutshell, succinctly done. So I've known Lincoln for a long time and he's mentioned it was something like over 30 years of being in group X. Also myself, 30 years of teaching. So collectively, we bring over 60 years of working Group X. And um, so that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're both incredibly passionate about what we do and helping one another. So in this sort of mentoring role and stuff. So let's see what we can bring to people. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we talked about, because we catch up from time to time, right, is we spoke about the fact that we recognize that um, Group X instructors are, are struggling with pay. Yeah, Pay hasn't changed. And we thought, well, look, we can't necessarily, although there's, there's talk of lots of change in that, what can we actually do to change it for Group X instructors? So we're going to talk about that. One of the things I heard you say that really hit home was that a lot of the time Group X instructors have been working in gyms because of the security offered. But actually, we know over these last years that that hasn't necessarily been the case. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to sort of speak to you, Lincoln, about what you felt would be a really good thing for these instructors to do. So first of all, let's talk about why you feel that Group X instructors perhaps aren't necessarily venturing into the community classes because we recognize that that's possibly where they're going to earn more. So what do you think is the reason why they haven't done it just yet? I think it's a scary proposition. A lot of instructors teach in sports centers, leisure centers and gyms because everything's done really the marketing's done the promotion's done the sound system is provided the licensing in many cases has been uh, bought so instructors apart from having to learn routines can just rock up teach their class move on to the next class get their paycheck mm -hmm. at the end of the month and everyone's happy i think covid has definitely put a spanner in that when they realize that when the gyms closed or when certain companies went online, there wasn't that security of being able to do that. Moving to the community is a great opportunity to sort of take back what is yours, but there's the logistical issues of finding a venue that's suitable, finding a venue that's available at regular times each week and also the logistical issues of people having to go to a place that's not having you know changing rooms showers etc that the the gyms and the sports centers do have so there are challenges but i do think if um a business is structured properly the benefits do outweigh the challenges yeah i i think it's um about making that decision to to step into that space I heard some of those things you were sort of saying, like there's not changing rooms and, you know, maybe there's not the coffee afterwards mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They're nice to have, but let's be honest, I think a lot of customers turn up for the instructor. And I don't, you know, I'm not saying you should necessarily do it in a barn, 
<laughs> but you know, oh, the I have done that in the barn actually, but there you go. <laughs> another story but enough right? about that <laughs> enough yeah. about that yeah. but i do believe that you know with a great following and sort of presence and you know this amazing sort of community you can create you can create that anywhere so mm. i want to ask you how easy you think it is to enter in that space what what you know if we're thinking about logistics and stuff like that how easy do you think it is to do i think you have to be very cognizant of what is it you're offering so for example you talk about um facilities i taught in a squash court for a year um so i taught my metabolic effect classes in a in a squash court and it was a manky squash court as well but i had the way that i set it up i um did it on a monthly uh, option i had 16 17 women and I saw it as small group training rather than you know the heady days of the 90s of having over 100 people in a class and because of the type of session that I was running and because of the type of add-ons that I was providing to help people get a result I very rarely struggled to have um I struggled to have to get more people into my sessions they tended to be full luckily enough for me uh, because people got great results uh, we had a great community we did lots of extracurricular stuff together as a group to really build that bond and that really helped me to keep that group exercise class going in the community for a number of years so I think the first step is being very clear that of what you're offering you know, we can't compete with the health clubs because, you know, the health clubs can get a lot of instructors to teach a wide variety of classes. So it's very much like a studio timetable. But I think maybe the the mentality needs to shift a little bit in the fact that we're now providing a service and we're helping people get a specific result. And I think by knowing what result your ideal class member is going to aim for then that helps you tailor the service to fit that if that makes sense yeah completely and I think you know while we're talking about this what's sort of popped to mind is that what we're not saying is that everybody should just now desert gyms no. you know um because you know we know that maybe that safe space you've got that you know uh commitment to the classes in there so it's not like it's either um you know working in a gym or community you can do a bit of both can't you so whilst so what what do you think is like the the first thing to get started right where where do, where do they start to look for ideas of where to go how are they you know do you think it's easy for somebody who's new to the industry to start in the community or do you think it would make sense for them to have worked in the gym what are your thoughts i think that Again, the mindset needs to change in terms of it's great to work in a gym, work, great to work in a leisure centre. Almost use that as you're being paid to promote your brand. You know, mm -hmm. so rather than just doing your classes and getting getting you paid and move on, just think I'm going to use this to make sure that as many people know about me, what I do as possible, so that, um, for example, I used to when I was teaching. Cheltenham Recreation Centre I used to create a monthly newsletter I used to type it out on a word processor myself print it out take it to the local printers but I used to hand that out every month you know off my own back because I wanted people to see that I was offering something more and then when I did decide to go into the community with um, a variety of classes um, and also my Ciroc Modern Drive business people kind of naturally gravitated uh, towards me so use teaching in the facility because word of mouth is a, is a great piece of advertising and you know if people can see that you're doing a great job and you're and you're trying to specialize in a certain area to for example um they will you don't know who they're going to speak to you know and and that will help you build your audience so sort of that's a long way of saying i think the first thing to do is to try to build your audience of of people that know about you and to know how you can help them um even if you're a newbie and i think new instructors it's a bit more challenging because there's no so many class formats now Again, it's difficult to know which one to veer towards. Um, and I think sometimes need to be invested in finding out what type of instructor that you want to be and who is it you want to help. So I think that would be the first thing. Really try to get a clear picture of, you know, 
drawing out who you are who your ideal class member is and then you can create your package based on that Lincoln, what I recognize in what you do now and as you're speaking is, you know, you reference like the heady days of having 100 people in in classes and stuff like that. You know, what I recognize is that you have adapted um, to what the industry is doing and stuff. Uh, I think that's really important because it could be easy, couldn't it? Just to stay in the olden days of, oh, I'll, I'll, you know, I just need to hand out. I need to use my word process. So thank God you're not doing that still. No, and printing out, time. you know. Right, right. It took a lot of time and investment, mm -hmm. right? But there are so many things that people can do. So, you know, I think it's, it, if, if we could speak to Lincoln, you know, um, back in those days. Yeah. Okay, you were there with your word processor, you go going to the print shop and stuff. What would you tell yourself, not for today's market, but what mm -hmm. would you tell yourself to do in those times? with your wisdom you have to be honest i'd say to do more of what i did i think i'm i'm a big fan of earning your stripes you know and go, doing leaflet drops doing the you know trying to add extra value because that's what i was doing no one else in my area was doing that they literally were just doing the classes you know contacting the local press um something that i did uh, from my personal training side i did what um i, I, I I approached my local press and I said, look, I'm willing to give three months of personal training to a reader um, in exchange for me being able to uh, notate and put a diary of how they're getting on throughout those 12 weeks. And so we, and they agreed. I was surprised that they agreed to be honest, but they agreed. And, and so we did one of those, you know, those like silly quizzes. So like, what's the opposite of black? Is it a gray? Is it B red or whatever? So we did one of those, got some responses. I chose this lovely lady, Pauline, um, and I trained her for free for 12 weeks. But each week it was like a Pauline's diary that appeared in, in the Gloucestershire Echo. Um, and that was brilliant for getting myself I've got so many inquiries and new clients so that was crazy so you know we did the hard yards and I think actually in today's world of instant gratification I do think there's this tendency to think you know what I'm going to go in a village hall and it's going to automatically have 25 people in and it's it's not <laughs> you know you have to go out you have to market you have to build your personal brand you have to build an audience of people that actually know about you I was saying this on, on another um podcast that mm -hmm. there's a, someone in my coaching group who hates social media is a complete technophobe um every sort of we make a joke because every sort of like newfangled thing that i try to in, implement she's like oh that's just too complicated um when covid hit the thought of going online absolutely terrified her but with the help of um, another fit pro she went online she now has regularly 150 people a month taking part in a face-to-face -face and online sessions she does no social media promotion but she spent ages years doing the hard yards of building her audience perfecting her craft getting a reputation locally and i think you can't overstate how in my opinion how important that is so Again, I know we go back to the heady days of the 90s, but and it was easy because there was a demand. And also, I think Zumba proved that if the demand is there, it's mm -hmm. easy to go into the community. How many people were in school halls and village halls and church halls teaching, you know, packed classes? So it can be done. You just need to, um, as I say, do the hard yards, uh, let people in your community know why you're different and how you can help them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think that thing of instant gratification and stuff and just thinking if we just plonk ourselves on Instagram, that it's people are just going to come to us. Um, actually, you're right. We have to put a lot of, of I'm going to say the word work, but effort and commitment yeah. and drive into, you know, uh, and that comes from belief. You know, I, I do wonder whether sometimes when people just do something very quick, it's it's not necessarily for the instant gratification. It's because maybe you know that imposter syndrome that people yeah, yeah. talk about a lot of the time. They think, 
I don't really know my space in this place and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm really encouraging people to put the, the hard work yeah. in. And that sort of leads me to the next question, which I do have on my list. So well done, you. <laughs> um, was I'm going to I'm going to just say it like this. Um, how do you deal with the competition? Um, I'd love to have a textbook answer and say right. it doesn't bother me, but sometimes it does. And sometimes you talk about imposter syndrome um, that does creep in. There's two things that I encourage people my instructors my instructors um to focus on and it is their uniqueness you know everyone has their own unique story of why they got into the industry everyone's got their unique story of um how they want to help people and why they want to help people and also why they're an expert so if you lean into those things and then focus your email newsletters your face-to-face uh, liaisons with people and also your social media posts on really trying to emphasize why you're different then it doesn't matter if xyz down the road offers the same type of class because they're going to teach it different to you and i think by being confident in who you are and how you can help people it can help alleviate that imposter syndrome to a certain degree yeah, to be really comfortable with yourself in that space. The yeah. reason I go on, sorry. go on. No, I think I, I I sort of wrote it down like that, and I don't think of it as competition. When we're talking about servicing, uh, you know, the whole population, yeah, uh, we know not enough people are moving. So no. really, the fact that the fact that there's other people offering something different or similar to you, it sh you know, it should just drive you to refine your art find what you know is really authentic to you definitely um and people when they i think you know if i could tell myself you know 30 years ago i i think i you know was a, a true reflection of myself at that time but it would just be you know just be you people will gravitate to you if they like what you're doing and stuff yep. like that and if, if competition draws it it's because they align better yeah and so whilst i call it competition um it's not about making ourselves better than them. It's just doing a better job on ourselves. That's that's how I see it. And yeah. I'm really, I'm really aware. I sort of interrupted you just a moment ago. I'm so sorry. What were you going to say? It's just the, again the days of, in terms of competition. How you know some local instructors who will remain nameless because I'm not going to name and shame them now because it's been and gone. Wouldn't let me go into their classes. Um, prefer of me stealing their idea of a grapevine with a leg curl at the end um whereas <laughs> do you know what I'm saying whereas <laughs> and I had I had instructors in one hall um they would hide there were pillars not very health health conscious but there were pillars in the, and they would hide behind and take notes and I'd be at the end I'd say look what you've got to do is just tell me you're an instructor it's, it's genuinely not a problem you know so i i never saw it as competition if other instructors came and took part in my in my sessions um yeah. because i knew that they couldn't teach without being big-headed they couldn't teach like me and they didn't have my personality because that's what i brought to the table it wasn't just a case of um teaching a set routine of 32 counts and so and i know it's it's hard especially with online now mm. and i think a lot of instructors were hesitant to go online for fear of being compared to you know the ideal physique instructors that were, were giving uh, routines away but again i do believe that if you are authentic and you use that word that people the right people will gravitate towards you and then that will make your life a hell of a lot easier because you're teaching people that you actually want to teach and they actually get you and actually feel that you get them yeah oh god i couldn't agree more and the fact is if you're having to fake it trying to bring in these people how hard is that to do yeah. to sustain that you know yeah. whereas um, don't get me wrong of course you you have to remain professional there's lots of things that we have to bring we can't just rock up in our you know i don't know whatever you have to present a good version of yourself in a yeah. professional way but if it's a reflection of you that's going to be a hell of a lot you know uh, less exhausting and 
genuinely, I think people gravitate towards you when they recognize it's you yeah. and not a version of you, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're talking about those heady days where people were just, oh, that's brilliant. You know, when the door, door um, get buzzer goes, yeah, that's excellent. Um, it's, it's a delivery from whistles, I must tell you. What was um, you saying about um, <laughs> editing? I know, I know. No, I think I should just leave it in because it's then it's authentic, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> so what I what I wanted to do was ask you about whether you do something like pay as you go or whether you get people to sign up because we can't, you know, years ago when hundreds of people might rock up and it didn't seem much was going on in your marketing, they just turned up. Who are all these people now? What would your recommendation be about, you know, pay as you go? Would you do it? Would you use an app to sign up? Would you, you know, get people committed? What are your thoughts? I think when I taught my metabolic effects sessions, I got people to sign on a monthly agreement. And the reason for that was that this class was a, a results-based class. And so I knew for people to get results, they would need to attend more than once a week. So the agreement was they paid X amount per, per, uh, per month and they attended two or three times a week. If people wanted to pay per session, I, I must admit I made the, the fee so high that, yeah. that they then thought, well, I might as well just pay for the month. Okay. And then the people that did pay per session, I thought, oh, fair enough. If you're going to pay me whatever it is per session, then good on you. Um, but those people didn't really last anyway. Yeah. They were very short term. And then a lot of them did transfer over to uh, a monthly commitment. Now, obviously, in these times, you know, people are struggling financially. And so I don't think there's anything wrong in offer a pay as you go option. But I do right. think that the the emphasis should be on encouraging people to make a monthly commitment. Right. OK, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I heard you say X amount when you were talking, you know, like. Yeah. And I think when people hear that, they'll go, well, what should it be? I'm not saying what do you charge? Mm. But because um, <laughs> you went, mm, don't ask. Um, but how would somebody work out? what they should charge because you know that's that's a part of it what people are nervous of is make you know I think charging too high so no one turns up mm -hmm. charging too low so it looks like ru rubbish yeah. um and what are they going to do about the fact of putting their prices up periodically any thoughts on that so how it was taught to me was that price is uh like a indirect linear relationship to the value that you provide so if you just teach whatever class, then you're only ever going to be compared with someone else that teaches the same class. And therefore, you're just starting to be seen as a as a commodity, you know, which we don't really want to be seen as. Whereas if you can provide or emphasize the value that you provide, if you emphasize the change that you can make. So I knew... For example, the metabolic effect class was great in terms of achieving physique change. Okay, if people came two, three times a week, they obviously monitored their nutrition. They were part of a community. Um, they they got the results that they want. They felt looked better. They felt better. Uh, they were able to sing from the rooftops how great the session was. So I knew that I was creating a high valued product. So therefore, I felt no problems or in charging so bearing in mind it was a half hour class it's a 30 minute class and so there is a tendency because when i was teaching the the workshops oh if it's a 30 minute class i'll just charge half of what an hour's class should be and i'm like well hold on a second i don't really like exercise i know it's crazy all right but i don't really i'm not one of these people that got into the industry because i love exercise <laughs> so if you could tell me and this is how I used to sell it to them. If you could tell me that I could get twice the results of a normal class in half mm -hmm. the time, trust me, I'm going to pay you twice. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Here's my, here's my wallet. 
Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. again, it's about the value that you provide as opposed to the time. And I think whether it's a price to work ethic or whatever, we're so conditioned to charge per hour or whatever that, that we kind of think of our class fees and hence why the pay as you go may not be, you know, mm. the, the, the shouldn't be the main focus. Yes. Give it as an option, but it shouldn't be the main focus, but it's about the value that you provide as opposed to the time that you provide, because us instructors know that, I mean, I put a post up, I nicked it from someone else actually that, you know, your hours teaching that class isn't an hour, you know, it's the, the, the time that you spent learning the course, then learning the mm-hmm. choreography, investing in the music, driving to the facility or taking public transport, um, setting up the facility if it's your own place, taking down the facility, chatting to people at the end. So you're not, people aren't paying for that hour. They're paying for the value and the service that you provide. And I think the more that we can get used to that and get our heads around that, then Again, if you have to justify it to someone, they're not the people for you. And I know it's difficult um, from a mindset point of view to think that because we want our classes to be full. But we want people to be, you want our classes to be full of people that appreciate what we do. Oh my God, yeah. Just chasing people so that it, you know, looks like there's a lot of people in there for you. Yeah, Yeah, I I I get why people might want to do that because again, it looks like it's successful, yeah. but yeah, I love, I love that, you know, that paying for the hour, you know, I, I know when we, we chatted the other day and we thought we'd talk about this subject is because of instructors, mm. you know, we know that uh, wages have not increased. I know that I earn, you know, per hour, yep. you know, the same as maybe 30 years ago. So, you know, when, when we think about what we can do, um maybe I don't know with 30 years experience and I step into the community yeah uh, there's 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 a lot of experience there as well I've done a mm-hmm. lot of training yeah I, I I believe I can provide a great service and yeah create a community people want to invest in community don't they 100 and especially after stuff. and especially after COVID they've realized the benefit of a community and again you you said it you're it's the service that you're providing not the class the class is just the a thing it's just if you're having a pillar of your fitness business the class is just one little pillar you know but the community that you provide the extra support that you provide and again with you know social media or or even whatsapp groups you're able to keep in contact keep a connection with people outside of the class so you're fostering that community spirit as well as helping them to feel accountable people like to feel accountable you know Absolutely. that's and that's going to help them to get results so again there needs to be a mindset shift in my opinion from just teaching ad hoc classes or classes that the, the studios want you to teach I mean there was a time where instructors were doing a particular training course because if they didn't do the course they weren't going to get sessions within health clubs that's nuts you know you should be able to have the choice of sorry I'm just on a bit of a rant here um, you, go you, for should, it. you should be able to have the choice if once you qualify to teach the type of class that you want to teach that's going to help get the results for the people that you want to teach as well so um, once mm-hmm. you build that once you f- feel that you're creating that service then yes it, it makes it a slightly easier um, transition into wherever you want to teach whether it is online or whether it is in the community yeah in, in my opinion no love it and um, I, I, a couple of times you've mentioned this mindset sort of mm-hmm. change how easy is that to do you know when you know, we're, I don't know, we've always been doing it. We've been 15 years teaching in a club. You know, we, we, we want to be paid more because we, we know we deserved it. We deserve yeah. it and stuff. How hard, if, if somebody's hearing this now and they're going, yeah, but, 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 that, that, you know, they've never got around to actually doing it, even though they know they're great mm-hmm. and they're doing a great thing. How how can someone shift that mindset? What is it? Is it they need some support? Is it that they just need to take a leap? I mean, you know, we, we're talking about trying to 
to make it secure for people but actually mm-hmm. that shift of mindset is really hard sometimes for people so how can they what are your thoughts on moving that mindset to be able to strike out and do these things i think it is about investing in yourself and realizing that the course the level two group x course is a good course for teaching you group x but it doesn't teach you the business element and also it doesn't teach you the mindset and resilience that you need to have longevity in the industry so my suggestion would be to invest in you know webinars and podcasts and looking at personal development looking at business seminars and the more training you do so in the heady days of the fit pro conventions you know it was easy to kind of start to build that confidence and mindset because you knew that twice a year you were going to one of the best events in Europe at the time and you were getting that education you were mixing with the other fitness professionals that were investing in their education and their business and so that did kind of say when I went back to my local leisure center I'm like Mm. yeah you guys are actually lucky to have me do you know the sort of training that I've just been on this weekend just to come back to teach you know this community and and that reflected in the numbers and actually to be fair to the ledger center they responded by in you know increasing my wages how crazy was that um but that's the that's one of the ways i would say to think if you are struggling from a you know imposter syndrome or confidence etc investing in your training to become a better fitness professional and delivering a an experience rather than just a, a standalone class that will help to improve your confidence and that will not make the transition easier on its own but it will definitely make you feel that it is possible to set up and even if it's just one session in the community to start off with you don't have to transition everything and like move house into the local village hall <laughs> but just you know just one one thing to start off with you know dip your toe in Mm. and start building and start developing that um that promotional aspect building your audience let people know um who you are why you're different and how you can help them that will help and the more you kind of show that and talk about that with confidence that will help to improve um, the mindset aspect yeah you know I'm thinking about when you're saying all this I was just thinking oh I wish I'd done a bit more of that you know Mm. myself years ago um and just you know I'm thinking of the hours and hours and hours that I taught every day and I was chasing more and more classes thinking that's the way that you build business I mean certainly mm-hmm. that helped my reputation and my experience and how I could I don't know choreograph that grapevine with a curl yeah. on the end um I added a spin and some arms just saying but hey. um you know I know <laughs> But I'm, you know, and I was in pursuit often of choreography and learning new trends and brands and stuff like that. And I'm just wondering whether, you know, if people are teaching four classes a, a day, maybe they teach one less class, you know, and do some investment, whether it's listening to a podcast, it's, you know, reading something, it's investing yep. in the education. There's loads of free stuff out there. Yep. You've done, tell, this might be a lovely opportunity to speak about Prime. Ah, Palace. Thank you very much. That's okay. Very unexpected. Um, <laughs> so yes, I've written a book for uh, group exercise instructors uh, called Prime, and that's an acronym. I do love an acronym, um, but it stands for um, planning, remodeling, instructing, marketing, and involving. And it's a process of helping instructors craft out their own unique course or program, so that if they were going to go into the community they were then able to lead someone from where they are to where they want to be and to get them to achieve a result so if you're a Pilates instructor and you wanted to put together a back care program I would work through the process of identifying who your ideal client is how to package that into your own unique framework and system how to test that how to market it and how to evolve it so it becomes uh, an integral part of your fitness business and the same whether you're a yoga instructor how to create your own yoga course or program to suit a specific need Um, and again all of these things will then help 
to make what you offer is different. Uh, and that's really the key to help you stand out and to help build your confidence so that you're not being viewed as a commodity. So there's nothing wrong in teaching ad hoc sessions, but again, changing the mindset from I'm teaching this session because I'm teaching this session to get my fee to I'm teaching my session to help build awareness of what I do, but also use it as an opportunity to talk about this other program that I have um, to offer as well. Yeah, I um, sort of recognize that sort of long term investment, you know, as sometimes when you go in classes and they're just like in the moment, you're just in the moment, in the moment. But actually, it's this long game, isn't it, that we have to play. So I will put the link to your book. Of Thank course, you very much. At the bottom. Well, that's absolutely our pleasure. So what are some other ways they can supplement income? You, you've got some great examples. You've said about metabolic effect, but, you know, things that I know you've spoken about, things like challenges. Yeah. Um, what are some ways um, you, it's got to feel, I think it's really important. We're going to, be, going to give you some examples, but it's got to feel right to you. That's first and foremost, and it's got to be right for your people, hasn't yeah. it? So mm -hmm. we're not suggesting that you go out and start selling stuff that... <laughs> you don't believe it i remember this is brilliant uh you know serena from step and pump i do, do you remember, of course we all love serena right i remember in my early days i used to go around with a suitcase with some of her um uh, her outfits and, yeah. and kit and that helped me supplement things it got yeah. me a few you know so there was me dragging a suitcase around but it did supplement my income right? yeah brilliant Definitely. So what are some what are some ways you think a group X or someone doing group training can supplement it? So it's not just the session. So you can run challenges. So uh, in a way that there's different ways of running challenges and not the same. Let's do 20 press ups a day challenge, um, but a challenge that helps to showcase again that you can help people by actually helping them you know so a five day tighter tummy challenge a five day uh, lower back care challenge um a, a five day um, calf stretch routine for runners or non-runners as the case may be so you can run a challenge charge a small fee get great results in a short period of time. And then you can then talk about your service at the end of that challenge, offer them a sort of discount for doing that. Um, so that's one way of, of doing that. Uh, you can run mini workshops. So mini workshops are, are workshops that are Ooh. one or two hours and you're literally just focusing on one specific thing. So I used to do them for Ciroc, um, my modern giant business. So we do a, a one hour a one or two hour mini workshop we get people to come along beginners and i would teach them two moves and how to link them together um but then with those two moves they were able to dance to a song by the end of those two hours so i'd managed to show them that you didn't need a massive catalog of moves to be able to partner dance and that created the buzz and excitement for wanting to then sign up to my Ciroc sessions so mini works and they're really easy to to, to set up mm. and I'm, I'm, I've got a training for that as well. Um, so, but challenges, uh, mini workshops, having go-to promotions. Uh, so we know as group exercise instructors, there are different times in the year that are, um, are sl slower than others. So you can have an, like an Easter promotion, uh, which is like a four to six week um I suppose transformation challenge you could have a beach body promotion you could have a back to school promotion so when the kids go back after the summer holidays you can do sort of a get back in shape um leading up to Christmas I've done a pre-tox before your detox um <laughs> kind of thing so people always wait until January the 1st to you know get rid of all of the toxins from their body um why not do something for four to six weeks mm -hmm. leading up to Christmas and the good thing about that is at the end of that time you know they're going to go into Christmas in in better shape but then you can kind of tie them in offer a discount if they then sign up to your sessions in January so if they sign up before Christmas you get a little bit of a, a cash influx uh, before Christmas but you know you've got them um, then in January so that's another thing um, that, that you can do as as mm -hmm. well um, 
And then you talked about, you know, selling clothes as a sort of a distributor, you know, find a, you know, equipment supplier for argument's sake, if you're teaching, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you're teaching with foam rollers, for example, if you're doing small group training, then find a, you know, a wholesaler supplements, if that sort of fits your, your bag. Um, you know, I know there were some way back when instructors that were supplementing with uh, network marketing products. I know that's a bit of a, you know, dirty word for some people, but I think the world of network marketing has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of health conscious wellness brands out there that, you know, and again, you know, provide mm -hmm. a lot of marketing advice and a lot of marketing training for fitness professionals. And I'm not aligned to any network marketing company, by the way. But, you know, the question that you asked is very relevant that, you know, if you're going to look at yourself as a business, look at other things that align with what you offer and see if there is a company that mm. provides a service and that will just save a lot of time in terms of having to create it yourself so that is an option for you um, but in definitely in terms of getting people into your sessions definitely mini challenges mini workshops um, you can use your facebook groups to do flash promotions as well um, all of them there are loads of there's loads we could be here for yeah. about four or five uh, hours talking but well, let's let's not do that just <laughs> oh fine am i boring you am i is that what you're trying to no, tell me no 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 uh not at all lincoln i could right. speak to you about four maybe just four and a half hours five okay far too long for me. okay fair um <laughs> i'm 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 sort of thinking about um you know this idea of selling stuff and you said you could save yourself time mm -hmm. couldn't you if, if you align yourself with the brand but don't forget you can also save your clients time as well yeah. because you know you're you've sourced something that a you believe in you've researched it aligns with you if it aligns with you it's likely going to align with your with your your people that are coming to your sessions yeah, i think 100%. it's I, I think i think if it looks like you're trying to sell that always makes me feel uncomfortable i don't know whether i'm not business minded enough but if it looks like i'm being sold to i feel quite uncomfortable yeah if if it looks like it, you know, there's some just, um, if I become curious in a product or whatever, that's when uh, that's a great place for a fitness professional to be. Make me curious, don't sell to me, because that curiosity will lead me to, to go, yeah, I quite like that. Tell me more. So if it's a hard sell, ooh, and, it, and, and but that again is a really good point that a lot of instructors don't like selling. So they eat to the point that they don't like talking about or selling their classes you know if someone phones them up and say right can you tell me about your session it's like that's the reason why I think a lot of instructors go straight into well it costs this amount and then try to mm. justify the price and it's it's about talking about the value of what you have whether it's your classes or whether it's anything that you're promoting on top of that and how it can help your prospective yeah. clients for example, social media posts doesn't all have to be about look how great my class is, come and buy, take my class. You can talk about if you focused in, if you dialed in on who you want to help and the type of service that you're offering, then you can create educational posts about the benefit of your activity so you can talk about the benefit of pilates for healthy back or strong core for healthy back or if you're looking at the menopause that seems to be the buzzword at the moment um mm -hmm. how your type of training can alleviate you know you know going through symptoms. the menopause yeah yeah symptoms yeah. And yeah. I think if you talk about that and you're educating people, and as you say, creating that curiosity, you're establishing yourself as a bit of an expert because you, you're leading with the giving hand, as it were. And so then the next option for people is to find out more about what you have to offer. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and when you're saying things like um, menopause being a, a buzzword, it's a, as an example it's really important isn't it that not everybody wants to align themselves and become this type of instructor but I don't think when brands come along buzzwords come along if it's not you it's okay but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt you does it to educate yourself in that mm -hmm. so that you know you can mention it I think if we always educate ourselves so that we can sell that that looks really really obvious and yep. I think you know having um, you know, when you were saying about masterclasses and stuff like that, you could have a masterclass, couldn't you? That's 
helpful for let's say it's menopause um you know that gives some information where it's a really honest and open conversation because there's not many you know lectures or seminars um, as a perimenopausal woman it's that i don't see any or oh, we're all talking about it but there's yeah. nothing i can access unless i pay for it unless i get well my gp's not giving me great information you know what i mean so so i think if you can offer something that really aligns with you you're you're gonna you know help your community in in such significant ways and um, which is really great and that's where a mini workshop can come in so you could that's another yeah. way you could do presentations as well so I, that's to be honest that's one of the easier ways that i found of filling in my metabolic effect classes so i i wow. did monthly seminars and i got my members to invite their friends to come along and i did just did a talk on belly fat or on cellulite or whatever wow. another one could be the menopause and the symptoms of menopause and how that could be eased with you know lifestyle modifications um and then that was an easier you know at the end of that then they did a sample workout and then i had an offer for them to sign up so you know leave with the giving yeah. hands i think sometimes we see selling yeah. and let's not get it twisted we all have to do a little bit of selling do you know what I mean? And it's that's business. Made, it is business. Yeah. And I think that, and again, mindset shift, you know, it's, you're not just an exercise instructor. We're so much more than group exercise instructors. We are people that offer a service, a very valuable mm. service. And maybe we need to take, take ourselves a bit more seriously. Um, and to do that, I think an element needs to be to think, well, again, what value is it we provide? And if we do genuinely believe, because this is the thing, if we genuinely believe that we provide a service that helps and affects and change in people, then we have every right to let as many people in our community know about that service because you want to help as many people as possible. So yeah, um, that's where, again, that mindset shift needs to take place. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, when we were talking about you not having to leap from teaching in gyms, you know, we're saying that you could do community work alongside it. Imagine all that work you do for your community, what it's going to do for just how comfortable and confident yeah. you feel. Imagine bringing that in into those sessions. It's not like you're going to be like, oi, come to, to my community things, but it's just going to make you feel like an authority. One thing I I, I really recognize in you Lincoln is I think that you've always just naturally and this is what's a really interesting thing I, I know people who have been really good like singers or whatever and I, I made the mistake of going they it was kind of like a gift it was something that mm. was inherent in them but I do hear that I think you had business a bit business mindset quite early on would you agree or disagree or is it something that you've really had to work on is it the drive in you what what is it? I think um, I, from the moment I left uni, I was self-employed and I liked the element because I know what my personality could be. I like the, ele elef the element, the elephant. elephant. I, like, I like elephants as well. Do you? But I no. do. Anyway, but anyway, um, I liked the element. If I didn't work, I didn't get paid because that was my motivational force in taking classes in looking at Ciroc in looking at a different um you know Ciroc was a classic example of fulfilling a need because um yeah. because I had a little bit of rhythm um people assumed I'd, I'd go to these parties and people think uh, and a, a tune would come on they want to do partner dance and I didn't know yeah. how to partner dance so I looked at the local magazine check that out um and here was this advert for Ciroc. I phoned them up thinking, oh, yeah, I'll go along. That'll be a laugh. And there wasn't anywhere near me for about 90 miles. And I said, well, you're looking for instructors. And then, you know, long story short, I ended up teaching um, Ciroc. So, but that's an example of looking for an opportunity. And then it, luckily enough, I mean, there were some bumps in the road, but it, it became very successful. Um, mm -hmm. I've always looked at, I mean, and also when I set up my, my business, you know, there was the Gloucestershire Enterprise Agency that gave some workshops on, on how to set up a business and, and how to look at what you did as a business. Um, and I've always looked at a way of trying to solidify what I had you know mm. whether it was and I always try to be I always did even in presenting I always tried to be different you know and because again 
I felt more comfortable. I had enough apprehension getting up on stage in front of people trying to be someone else. So I might as well have that apprehension knowing that at the end of the day, I'm just just being me, um, which I know is easier said than done. Uh, but that's the thing that helps to, to, to get me through. Yeah, absolutely. Marketing. Talk to me about how easy you find marketing. You're really, I think, brilliant on social media people where will they follow tell tell people where they'll follow you and then tell them <laughs> you know about your marketing ideas maybe yeah I mean I'm 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 pretty unimaginative so it's everything forward slash Lincoln Bryden so it's like Facebook forward slash Lincoln Bryden Instagram forward slash Lincoln Bryden LinkedIn forward slash Lincoln Bryden I think um it's a bit of an ABC so you, marketing is about building your audience it's about then finding a way of um building your list and then converting people that are on your list into paying class members or clients this is simple as that really to be fair and i think that if you keep it simple then it doesn't become overwhelming so you'll hear people say you've got to post on instagram three times a day like who's got time for that do you know what i mean um post as often as you feel comfortable do you have to be on instagram twitter snapchat tiktok um you my know, space yeah my space i used to like my space I, oh, yeah, I used to I was, love it i used I to love gut, that yeah. i was gutted when that left yes. um choose the one that and also again it's choose the one that you feel your perspective classmates mm. and clients are going to be on so if you feel that most of people you know my students laugh at me because they said you know no one uses facebook anymore so actually I do and they go yeah but you're old and I'm like all right calm down I'm marking your assignments you need to wind your necks in but <laughs> you know but if your demographic is a demographic that's going to use Facebook then mm -hmm. use Facebook as your main medium of communication mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. yes there are you know there are some figures some stats that TikTok's exploding at the moment but think about think about is what you're going to do on TikTok, yes, it might build your audience, but is it going to build your audience locally in a way that's going to get those people into your classes? If you can answer honestly, yes, then yeah, knock yourself out, bust a little yeah. move on TikTok. Um, but if you feel that your energies is going to be better spent, you know, getting out of your house, speaking to the local chiropractor, nutritionist, physiotherapist, nail salon, beauty therapist, hair person, and build up relationships with them, asking how you can promote people so they go to their services, again, leading with the giving hand, and then maybe get a little bit of reciprocity, whether it's organizing a bit of a transformation competition. So anyone that goes through a, a four, six week transformation, the winner, voted by people on social media and gets a makeover with these people if you feel that that mm. might be a better way of promoting yourself in your classes then do that you know build your audience build an email list because that's an asset that that you own and then you can do sort of weekly newsletters if you wish but then think about how you're going to convert people that are on your email list into mm. paying class members Okay, so that's so marketing doesn't have to be be in. I mean, there are ways that you can promote, have one piece of content, and then just fire it out in loads of different places, which is what I do. Which is the reason why you think I'm prolific on social media. I'm not. I've just got one bit, and I just fire it out in different areas. Yeah, um, perfect. It's but, seen though. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's having that omnipresence, which is I think that's the marketing term where you just, um, you know, if if people google you then you're in you're on linkedin instagram twitter because people do have different mediums that they follow i just i've never really got on twitter got on with twitter i've never really understood it but when people search me i'm on twitter so th yeah, there you go yeah, absolutely. but it's trying to make it as simple as possible for individuals yeah You've shared a lot. Thank you. You're, I feel, yeah. I feel that you live and breathe it. So that's why I always think that's, mm. you know, I think it's really important. I feel like you're an authority on this space. So that's why I you. wanted to speak to you again. And I do. Um, again, it feels not like you should, you should, you should. 
because I think a lot of people with business and marketing it just feels like there's a lot and just having permission to say you don't have to be on TikTok you don't have to be this it's just it's comforting but encouraging so what how do you keep this going where where are you getting this energy to keep on doing this do you do you research things do you have mental I mean you know like what what makes you keep on doing it Lincoln why do you do what you do well um, yeah um I, I do like it I enjoy it I think that I genuinely believe that I have something to offer you know I, I like the educational part maybe it's the lecture in me I do like the educational aspect of, of, of what I do and it's my way of I suppose giving back to the to the industry I'm lucky enough to have had a, a long career and I've you know traveled the world etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I do enjoy this part you know I you know I do have a mentor I um, have a coach I study myself and I put things into to action I like the creation process so the courses that I create I, I actually enjoy that um, because I feel that again I've bought hundreds of courses that are still on my laptop I haven't opened you know and I don't want my stuff like the book that I wrote I don't want my book to be a book that people read flick through that's all right you know I want them to actually go through the process of you know going from point a to point b because ironically the people that have done that have got the the, the best results um so yeah it's just keep investing in 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 you really and again yeah as an example, during COVID, I was part of a, a, a program. I won't say how much it was, but it, it wasn't cheap uh, because I had the time and I wanted to I wanted to, to invest in the program. And within within that program, over, throughout the world, there were twenty five thousand other people investing in this program and investing in their education. So wow. So it's it's there there are people and that's another instance that during that troubled time there were still people investing in, in themselves so even in this troubled time there's still people out there that want to invest in their health and wellness and again I think the mindset is that if you've got something of value that you know can help people you've got a duty to share that to as many people as you can yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. Um, I think, you know, the whole thing with the fact that you're still, you know, pursuing it um, really sh shines. And, and when you said about, you know, you've got some educations that you've not even looked at, it's very apparent in the way that you do educate other people that this is practical, this is helpful, this is guidance without being preachy. And that mm -hmm. really comes across even in what you've said here. So obviously a massive thank you from me personally because I love chatting to you but I know Pleasure. that this will have been been really helpful and informative to the people tuning into this um I just want to give a shout out to Lincoln's book Prime there's the link obviously um you know to follow him on social media um he does give a lot to the industry so yeah thank you I want you to be able to sign us out today I'm going to hand it over to you as a sign out you didn't tell me you were going to do that either. I didn't. Um, um, just believe in what you do. Uh, have confidence in what you do. Spend time clarifying who is it you want to serve and how you're going to help them. And as long as you create a, a fitness business group exercise service that helps people, then that makes a lot of the marketing and the transition into community, if that's what you want to do, a lot easier. Mm. Lincoln, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your time. And I'm sure I'm going to get you again to come and chat to us. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Thank you for asking me. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.